After being guided by Kakarot's mental verse creation Goku, who now is playing a character named Turles, appears on planet Vegeta about six months before its destruction. He looks to the horizon and sees a large castle on top of a cliff. Flying low on the lake below the cliff, he approaches King Vegeta's castle, only to be met with bullets of energy, while shouting warning, Hey, hey, hey! I'm not here to cause trouble! Turles explains comically dodging the attacks, until he sees four Saiyans coming his way. He warns, I'm just passing through. Hey you! Don't you know that invading this territory without an appointment is forbidden? A messy-haired Saiyan wearing brown armor and a blue cape asks. What are you doing here, stranger? The other Saiyans hold Turles by the arms. He shows no reaction at Kakarot's request, the energy of destruction within himself. I come from a faraway place in search of food. And Turles starts making up his story there. Hearing his story, a guard asks him, with his cape fluttering in the wind. Are you telling me you came from the desert of darkness? The other guard adds. Rarely do Vagabond Saiyans come from here. Yes, yes, that's right. Turles takes advantage of the guard's words to continue. It's been a while since I've been here, so I got lost. If it's not too much trouble, I'd like to leave now. First we have to report what happened to King Vegeta, and just then, maybe you can go. The Guardian turns his back on him and makes a sign with his hand, telling the others to guide him to the castle. What's your name again, stranger? Hi, I'm Turles. Turles smiles when he remembers that he shouldn't arouse suspicion, then asks, by the way, do you have food? I'm really hungry. At the entrance to the castle, guards kneel, forcing Turles to do the same. King Vegeta walks out the gates with his blue and red cape flapping in the wind. Surrounded by guards and servants, he goes to the guardians and asks, What happened this time, Zorn? This outsider named Turles, coming from Desert of Darkness, was invading your territory, King Vegeta. We think it's wise to bring him to you so that you can decide his destiny from now on. I see. King Vegeta faces Turles, who by now had already faced him. You are somewhat familiar to me, Turles, although I can't say for sure who your face belongs to. That armor of yours, well, if you came from the Desert of Darkness and you have an armor like that, of course you're pretty powerful. I earned this armor in a bet, Lord Vegeta. I'm not that powerful. I was just passing by and stop. Sorry to interrupt what would have been a very well-rehearsed story. If you were around, you wanted something, right? Well, instead of locking him up in underground prisons, I have another proposal for you. Tonight, there will be a festival in the nearest village, where we will have a fighting tournament. I want your presence there, otherwise I won't let you go on. But King Vegeta, is it wise to let an intruder like him free to look around in the meantime? Zorn asks, despite his fear of questioning the king. Don't you dare question my decision, Zorn. Turles will be taken to the nearest village, and he will stay there. I want to see what he is capable of. Put him in the group against Bardock. After all, I just remember that they are very similar. Turles' heart freezes. He was getting closer and closer to being discovered, and he had just arrived. After King Vegeta's decision, Turles is guided by Zorn to the entrance of the nearest village through a small forest. Listen, outsider, don't get in trouble, otherwise I'll finish you off with my bare hands. Zorn threatens him. No need to worry, Zor-chan. Turles smiles. I'll help as long as I can while I'm here. Just one question, where do you have food? Turles' stomach starts making embarrassing noises as Zorn takes off without further explanation. Turles follows him through the village where the houses are carved out of round stone, and now adorned with multicolored herbs. Stalls after stalls stretched out into view, selling everything from carrots and meat to laser pistols and used armor. Turles immediately has his gaze drawn to a workbench, where the flesh was being sliced by a greenish armored Saiyan. Hello ma'am, I'm coming from a trip and I wanted to know if I can eat in exchange for providing my services. Turles says trying to get a roast in exchange for washing the dishes or something. I don't mean to cause trouble. Hello, sir. Sorry if saying this is inconvenient, but you are the spitting image of my husband. Gine responds by smiling at Turles. He'd be scared to see you face to face. I think I can make an exception for you. Eat what you want and you can help me hunt next time. Deal. Turles takes a big chunk of meat and devours it within seconds. Oops, I think I went too fast. I have to keep my cover up. If I come from a deserted area, it means I usually eat little, so I'll have to fill myself up with just that piece. Turles smiles at Gine as he thinks to himself. That woman, she's not that strange to me. And then he asks, Hey ma'am, this husband of yours who looks like me, what's his name? His name is Bardock. He has just returned from a mission and is preparing for tonight's fighting tournament. Gine responds taking payment from a new customer who had bought two pieces of meat. Bardock, he's the one I will fight in the tournament. Turles exclaims remembering King Vegeta's words. He must be a really strong guy, right? Yes, he is. I hope our son Kakarot becomes as strong as he is. What? 
Turles in a state of shock inside with the word Kakarot echoing over and over in his mind. He thinks, Kakarot, is it a common name around here? Or it can only be kidding. This woman is my mother. After that, he says lying to her, Kakarot, I've never heard that name before. Is it a common name in this region? No, my son's name is unique, just like him. Bardock doesn't pay much attention to him because he's always on missions, but I know he likes the boy. By the way, what's your name? My name is Turles. I was just thinking about something. What time does this tournament start? Turles disguises it as if it were nothing. In about two hours, even Frieza, the one who has business with King Vegeta, will be present. Frieza? Turles asks, opening his mouth, while Gine smiles at him like it's nothing. Two hours later, Turles heads to the arena that was at the end of the festival's big fair. There he sees a long line entering through a silver gate. The fighters, all Saiyans, warmed up wearing their armor of the most varied colors, confirming their presence with their superior. I think it's right here. Turles stands in line until his turn comes. And you, who are you? The supervisor, a partially stout-bodied Saiyan wearing a robe, asks. Hi, I'm Turles. He nods, smiling until he remembers the deal with Kakarot's spirit. I'm Turles, he said again, more seriously this time. There is no one named Turles here, sir. Are you sure you signed up? Turles tries to convince the supervisor, unsuccessfully, but then a familiar voice interrupts them. No problem, Onion. I forgot to tell you. Turles will participate in Bardock's group. Bardock would have to face two warriors at once because of the absence of one in his starting party, so Turles's participation will be very helpful. Sorry for the inconvenience, King Vegeta. The supervisor bows. I'll put you in Bardock's group right now. How funny. Another voice, now more sadistic echoes. He's even similar to that Bardock. If you look closely, it can't be. That voice. Turles thinks to himself as he turns his face to the side and faces Frieza sitting on his movable throne. I think I've been told this before. Turles smiles as he scratches the back of his head. But I'm nowhere near as powerful as he is. That's what we'll see. King Vegeta says joining Frieza and his guards. They enter through the big golden gate on the right where the elite were heading to the cabins. Good luck, Turles from the Desert of Darkness. After a few minutes, all the fighters were already in the middle of the gladiator arena. With the stands packed, they felt the vibes of Saiyans looking forward to the fights of the Great Festival. Saiyans who came from all over the planet. Turles was amazed at the vastness his people once had, even though most died in intergalactic wars. The famous Summer's Festival Tournament of the Saiyans from Planet Vegeta is finally starting, the announcer in red armor exclaims. With the magnificent presence of King Vegeta and the great Frieza glorifying us, we will contemplate this incredible tournament of fighters. Warriors, join the corresponding groups now. On the panel, the name of the participants lined up in groups, defining the fights. I will finally be able to meet my father. Turles heads towards the indicated location. I can't arouse suspicion at this time. I must be just a baby. The eight warriors of Bardock's group were already on their post, just like Turles. With fear, he turns his face to the side looking for a warrior who looks just like him. When he sees one with an extremely cold look to face him, with a scar on his face and features similar to him, the warrior wore caramel armor with his monkey tail wrapped around his waist. Are you the outsider from the Desert of Darkness, Turles? Bardock asks. You are using a well-preserved armor for someone who lives there. Too preserved, actually. Well, you know how it is. Turles smiles, scratching his head. I just put it to this sacred moment, where I will fight before the honorable presence of King Vegeta and Emperor Frieza. Smart boy. Bardock nods his head while smiling. But you certainly won't stand a chance. Your body is that of a true fighter, but your spirit is weak. I can tell just by looking at you. I don't know how you survived for so long in an isolated place like the Desert of Darkness. Is this guy my father? Turles thinks to himself. What an annoying guy. He's such a moron. The tournament continues with maximum intensity with the fights happening quickly. Turles tries to use as little force as possible to not accidentally kill any Saiyans winning two fights before reaching his group's final confrontation against Bardock. The moment they meet face to face under the platform of Group 8, Turles shows a big smile of happiness. Finally, the time has come. Turles clenches his fists and arches his knees, avoiding Son Goku's famous fighting pose again. The moment I can fight you. Why are you so eager to fight me? Bardock faces him, taking his left leg back and keeping his fists at chest height. What a sucker. You've barely arrived and you already think you have some friendship with someone here. He you have no idea. Turles smiles at the excitement of the battle. Let the group eight final begin. Bardock versus Turles. The referee initiates the fight and both Turles and Bardock head into a deadly showdown. I have to be careful. One slight slip and I end up killing my father by chance. Turles thinks to himself as he dodges Bardock's punch and punches him in the stomach. Oh no! And there he goes! 
Bardock is thrown to the end of the combat platform facing Turles. Well, well, well. You really have a good punch, Turles. It would be very useful in the service of the Great Frieza's army. Bardock makes a dash across the platform and lands a sweep kick. Too bad you can't go on with your little exhibition show. Oh yeah, that's predictable. Turles jumps and dodges the kick easily, when Bardock almost falls off the platform by himself. It looks a lot like the tournaments there. Hmm, the tournaments of the Desert of Darkness. Turles lands a kick to Bardock's head, who blocks with both arms and backs away. My disguise is almost gone. That's right, Turles. Tell them you live on Earth. Turles calls himself in his mind for almost blowing his disguise. I have to be more careful. This tournament doesn't interest me, so I'll let the old man win. If I wanted, I could end up with everyone here in a few seconds, but I think that will not be well seen. I see they fight to the death there. Bardock shoots in a low fly and charges a sphere of blue energy, leading to Turles' torso. But they are too weak for tournaments like this. The sphere hits Turles, who lets himself be thrown to the edge of the platform. You're not so bad, but the fun's over. Turles waits for Bardock to arrive with an outstretched fist, ready to hit. Turles dodges Bardock's fist several times playing with him, and then directs his face to the center, allowing himself to be hit by the punch, falling off the platform. And the winner of Group 8 is Bardock! The announcer announces while several Saiyans cheer and applaud. Bardock! 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 It can't be. Bardock was in shock inside. He dodged several times and let himself get hit. Why? Who is this guy anyway? It was a good fight, Bardock. Turles thanks him, bowing. Next time I'll train hard to finish you off. You can be good at anything. Bardock turns his back on Turles. But you're certainly a terrible liar. And so he goes. At the top of the Colosseum, in his place of honor, Frieza was in ecstasy sitting on his mobile throne beside King Vegeta. He breaks his silence. This fighter, Turles, is not an ordinary person. Frieza looks at him with his evil eyes. Did something happen that I didn't see? King Vegeta asks. For me, Bardock won fair and square as expected. And so time passes and the tournament comes to an end with Bardock beating the leaders of the other groups and claiming the prize money. I told you, Lord Frieza. He may not be elite, but he is a great warrior. Whenever you want, feel free to place your speech. Frieza goes with his mobile throne to the place where everyone could see him. All Saiyans who fought in the tournament were back in the arena to hear Frieza's words. Dear Saiyans, it is with great pleasure that I come here to announce the real reason for this tournament. Frieza pauses briefly, then continues. This tournament served for you to demonstrate your skills in battle. Those who are most successful already have a guaranteed place in my personal army. At least half of you have earned this opportunity. The Great Frieza is amazing, one of the Saiyan exclaims. Who knew we'd have an opportunity like this? Another cries out. The Great Frieza is the best. If I'm chosen, I'll have enough money to take care of my family. So that's what the damn Frieza wanted with this tournament. Turles asks Bardock, standing next to him, just using the Saiyans as a tool. Hey, Turles, if you intend to continue your disguise, you better keep your mouth shut. Bardock stares at him with his eyes of extreme coldness. If Frieza was watching carefully enough, you'd be one of the selected ones for sure. But I don't want to be part of Frieza's army. I just wanted the prize money. You know, right? Turles says, but Bardock replies. It's not that simple, Turles. No one can just say no to Frieza's invitation. But think on the bright side. At least now you'll have a job, and you won't have to go back to the terrible place you came from. After making his announcement, Frieza finishes his speech. Today I am very pleased with what I saw. It's great to know that my loyal Saiyan servants have good warriors to fight on my behalf. Now go and rest, because soon my army will have many new missions for you. After Frieza's farewell, Bardock tells Turles, Okay, Turles, I'm not the type to make a lot of friends, but for some reason I like you. If you want, I can arrange a place for you to stay until you complete your first mission in the army and finally get paid and support yourself. Shortly thereafter, Bardock inevitably discovers that Turles had already met his wife Guinea and that she had given him food in exchange for work. And so Bardock and Guinea took the foreigner to fulfill the deal. Facing the two men, Guinea says, Oh my, I still can't believe how incredibly similar you two are. That's scary. But Bardock doesn't like this comment. That's silly. We're not that much alike. Now stop talking nonsense and get this idiot to work. I found out that Turles is placed in my group by King Vegeta. And tomorrow we're going out on a mission. I have to prepare some things for tomorrow's mission so I can't go with you. After saying goodbye to Barlock, Turles and Guinea leave to hunt, and they don't have to look far to find the first wild beast to be bought down, an animal that reminds Turles of the wild boars of planet Earth. Wow, are there wild boars here too? Turles asks as he sees the brown-haired pigs running through the bushes. Boar? What are boars? These are gabarises. They're very tasty. What you ate yesterday was the leg of one of them. How cool! Let the hunt begin. Turles quickly goes into the middle of the forest, when after a few seconds, he returns with a pile of gabarises in his arms. Is that enough? Are you really a Saiyan? Guinea asks surprised. 
Of course it's enough. Actually, that's enough for a whole month. Now go rest tomorrow. You leave on your first mission under Bardock's command, right? Turles responds, happy to be at his mother's side. <laughs> wow, that's right. I have to get ready. Bardock seems to be a very strict guy. Being his son should not be easy, right? The next day, the mission members were already on the runway. The spherical spaceships were at their posts, five in all. In addition to Bardock and Turles, Tora, Leek, and Fasha were there. The ship's engineer finishes the last repairs and tells the soldiers from Frieza's army that was there to supervise the launch. Members of the mission of Unknown Planet TL-0762, on guard! Frieza's soldiers stare at them as everyone gets ready. The ships are already programmed for a direct and non-stop trip towards the mission location. Remembering the wish of the Great Frieza is that you check if there is intelligent life on the planet. If so, finish off everyone and plant the Empire's flag there. Yes, sir! Tora cries out, clapping a hand to his chest. All for the alliance between the Saiyans and the Great Frieza. So be it, Bardock says, entering the ship, which didn't take long for the rest to do. Hurry up, Turles, we don't have all the time in the world. The ship is too tight, how am I going to train in here? Turles sits inside the typical Saiyan ship, adjusting his pink scouter to his face, which he got when he was assigned to the mission. No one here is going to train now. If you intended to train, you should have done it earlier, Bardock responds. The trip will take two months, so be patient. The food pills are in the compartment on the left. We'll have to ration them to last. Oh, that's easy. I'm already used to eating little because of where I come from. Turles' stomach rumbles at the ship's hatch it closes, and the launch begins with the five spears heading into space. What is that thing? Is anyone listening? What do you want, Turles? What happened? Damn! We barely started the mission and you're already annoying! What was it? I just wanted to wish everyone a safe trip. It's going to be so long that I think I'm going to use this time to do some mental training. What the hell is mind training? Fasha's voice echoes in the scouters. Is this another one of the customs of the people of the desert? Uh, well, just concentrate in your mind and simulate a fight. Turles responds, seeing that he was talking too much. Anyways, good trip, everyone. The whole. Seriously, what the hell is this guy thinking? Did this Turles hit his head somewhere for talking such rubbish? Hey, Bardock. Tora is the one speaking now. This unknown planet. Well, isn't it a few million kilometers from the planet where your son left on his mission? Yeah, they'll arrive at their destination a few days from now. We might bump into each other somehow. Bardock responds. Raditz is doing well in his missions for the Alliance. After this mission, he already has a next one to accomplish. Not that it's any of my business. Hey, Bardock, don't be so hard with Raditz. Turles alert. He might grow up to be a bad, irresponsible person. Oh, Turles, you really are a joker. Everyone in their ships, seeing that Turles had a certain refined humor. Little Raditz sneezes billions of kilometers away inside his ship. I'm getting bored already. Don't be so hasty, Raditz. Little Vegeta exclaims from his ship as he presses the button on his scouter. When we get there, it'll be worth it. We have authorization from the great Frieza himself to exterminate a few thousand miserable insects.